you had uh, an kind of an unreal moment that took over, uh, you know, it was on ESPN, it was on uh, national news, international news. You uh, had scored a goal. You and we spoke about this on our show. You scored a goal. You grabbed a, a microphone in DC. that was on the field in yeah. DC. Like and... you might not even need the mic for them to hear you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and you really, you know, delivered a very powerful message, uh, asking Congress to do something about gun violence. I mean, we we had just seen. Uh, ju I, I don't even remember which, which mass shooting it was because there there were just there just too many to remember, but. You know, w w when we had Jim Curtin on the show, we spoke to him about like as the coach uh, and what did that feel like seeing one of his players kind of, uh, uh, sh you know, show that kind of leadership and really s kind of speak out and use that moment for something powerful. But now we can ask you, what was, uh, it's not even about what led up to that moment because we know what it was, but what what was your life like after that happened and 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 whether it was dealing with trolls on the internet whether it was dealing with the positivity what how did you feel after that moment yeah it was just uh, i felt it felt pretty good to get that off my chest you know just that weekend was surreal uh, we were in dc and you know that was, the el paso and dayton shooting happened on that same weekend yeah. so i mean that was just at the forefront of my head I, I mean, you turn on the tv in the hotel room that's all every station yeah. is talking about uh, it's like here we go again, you know, another mass shooting in, the, in this country. So um, I, I still can't wrap my head around what exactly led me to the mic because uh, of a premonition or whatever it was. But I, I remember I went over to celebrate in that corner because we had played them previously in the cup game, and that's actually where our uh, our fans were <laughs> that game. But yeah, uh, that it, last previous it, game, like, I but think they it changed was... it up. Yeah. Wasn't it Elsino's mom or something? Somebody's mom yeah, was there. So I went over there and I didn't see any of our fans, <laughs> but actually down low, I see yeah, Elsino's yeah. mom and sister. <laughs> so I went over and hugged them, you know, I recognized them. And, and, yeah, all, yeah. and like, you know, I'm, I'm hugging and I look over and I saw the mic and whatever it was, I went over to the corner and just said what I said, right? And did you know so, that those mics basically are put like really high and loud and pick everything up and you yelled directly in it to where I'm sure some tech in the, yeah. in the truck was like slapping the earphones off of it? <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. But there's also always some guy in the truck yeah. too, right? I mean, when you're watching live back at home, you're on a five, seven second delay. So they could have easily cut that I'm out, right? They did. Or muted that. So um, I had no idea, you know, it got played out until the police officer on the sideline going into the locker room it said like hey by the way thanks for what you said and uh, you've gone viral and that's when i knew like oh here we go you know my phone battery was already dead with a whole bunch of messages and everything but yeah you asked me if i if i dealt with trolls um you're always going to deal with trolls right in social media i mean unfortunately that's it is what it is but that was maybe only like one maybe two percent of all the messages i got you know i, I just dealt so much more with the positivity um you talk about impact and, and I have victims of, of mass shootings themselves reach out to me talking about how, how um, amazing it was for them to hear somebody like myself to, to back them up kind of, or to give them a voice, um, you know, uh, suffering from anxiety, PTSD, all these things, you know, it, it's just amazing. It's incredible that we still continue to see the amount of gun violence that we do in this country. You know, um, I think uh, it's an issue that I started getting more involved in living overseas and obviously with my uh, my wife is from Norway and, and, and they don't deal with any of this type of gun violence that we do here you know the gun culture obviously that we have in our society so after that incident you know um, obviously I became a member of uh, every town um, organization that tried to bring gun awareness and, and so I'm uh, part of their athletes council um, sit on the board so just trying to do things you know and, and, and here in Philly, in my community, even back home uh, in Weston, because as you all know, Weston is very close to a park where that shooting happened, um, that school shooting. And I, I have a teammate here at the Union who lost one of his best friends in the shooting. So, you know, this all hit really close to home. And, and after the Parkland shooting, that's when I, I, I started getting more engaged. And obviously, this that shooting that we can we see happen. So as a person, as a human, uh, you know, as you guys may be familiar with me, I've always been a vocal guy. You know, I've always stayed up for what I believe in. Um, and this is no different. Um, so I feel like uh, as a father uh, now, as a, who has two kids now going to a school down the road from where I live and having calls and texts uh, two or three times now about the school being on lockdown, you know, because of a uh, active shooter or a suspect with a gun. 
I mean, come on, man. Like, you know, like we can do better than this as a society. Like we need to continue to work together. You know, obviously in this country, we have the two party system, but this is a nonpartisan issue, right? This is, and a lot of the things I talk about, I bring up, it shouldn't be so political, you know, that we have to shut up and not talk about it. Um, this is, I'm coming at it from a, a humane angle, you know? So that's where I, that's where I come from. For, for, with a lot of I can't things. imagine someone being upset at a message of people shouldn't be dying from senseless gun violence like that. The fact that no, someone absurd, gets yeah. upset about that, it's like, whose side are you on? You know, yeah. <laughs> right? It's, exactly. It, it really is inspiring. It, even more like, uh, you know, my parents are from Dominican Republic. So uh, immigrant parents, when you're the like the child of immigrant parents, what tends to happen is is that they're they're more protective and cautious and like don't say don't anything. get us in trouble don't don't get us in trouble my family don't was like don't attention. make them send us back to cuba yeah <laughs> <laughs> so it's like as another latino it is also inspiring because it's like you know we we're we're as american as anyone else as the people that desperately want guns we're as american as they are by saying we don't want ridiculous gun violence uh, all the time and somebody should uh stand up for that so i applaud you yeah. for for doing Where do you that, get that it, from? it definitely helps us as well, well who does that come from who does that nah fuck out of here i'm gonna say what i want i, I don't know cause... to be honest because you see that colombian shirt he's got on his, i have colombian parents and they're like ah, yeah, otra vez. yeah. <laughs> <laughs>